everyone. Welcome back to Luffy Studio. Today we are here for the next episode of the End Dead Talk podcast. We're going to be talking about The Walking Dead Season 5, Episodes 8, 9, and 10, and my dad is here to join me. Hey, everybody. So I like these three episodes overall. I thought they were really good. You know, they were really sad, but they had some great meaningful stuff to them. Um, and I'm looking forward to the direction that things are heading. What, what, did, what did you think? Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed these episodes. I thought they were great. <laughs> okay, so we start off with episode 8. It's, it's, it's crazy because I feel like we watched it so long ago. Yeah, but... we get, we're spacing out uh, a lot of episodes now due mm-hmm. to our work schedules, so... We're not mm-hmm. quite uh, <laughs> able yeah. to keep up with it like we were. Mm-hmm. But it's called Coda, and basically it starts off right where it left off. You know, um, Lamson escaped because he distracted Sasha. So Rick chases him down and just shoots him flat out. Um, and then Rick and his team have to, like, they concoct a story with the two other uh, staff members that they kidnapped mm-hmm. um, to make it seem like Lamson was eaten by walkers. Um, and then back at the hospital, you know, they're, they're, Don's upset because they weren't able to capture Noah. Um, and it's clear that there's just this divide happening at the hospital. More and more people are hating Dawn. Right. Um, right. which I don't blame them. I mean, she's a terrible person. I would not want to be working for her. Yep. I mean, meanwhile, Beth through all of this just wants Carol to wake up and she wants to escape. Mm-hmm. Um, but back at the church, um, last episode, again, it's hard to remember, but Gabriel, like, just, like, escaped the church and just went off on his own. Um, and he goes to the school, and this is where, um, like, the Terminus people were at with Bob, and he sees the little bit of Bob's leg. Um. It really freaks him out. Yeah, and then he goes back to the church, or in the note, the walkers come out of the school and they follow him to the church. Mm-hmm. And then Carl Michonne, um, help him, um, while he goes inside, um, and then he allows them to escape, so he holds off the walkers, um, which was, like, an interesting move from him, you know, showing a little bit of selflessness right there. Right. Um, letting them go first. I mean, of course, I think anyone in, in, that, in a normal situation, anyone who has a baby, the other person would let them go first. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, absolutely. But I thought there was a little bit of character development from him just yeah. in that moment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think I'm really hoping that, that that his character makes it a while so we can see his arc to figure yeah, out where I'm they're getting going. More, I'm, at first, I thought it was weird, just just because it just seems so like extreme that you would make that decision to not let anyone into your building. But right. I guess I'm starting to get more interested in his storyline. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then basically, right when things are about to get worse, that's when Abraham and them come back. And Michonne tells Maggie that they that Beth is alive in Atlanta, so it's like a moment of happiness before what's inevitably about to come. Right. So then there now the whole church group is heading to Atlanta, and then back at the hospital we have this cop named O'Donnell, and him and Don get into a fight, um, and then Beth pushes him down the elevator shaft. Now a lot of people have suffered from being pushed down this mm-hmm. elevator shaft. Sure. It's very central, um, and that's like a brutal death too, especially because there's walkers at the bottom. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, basically, Beth kind of realizes that Dawn's whole thing is to get her to, like, kill all the people that she can't kill herself. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's manipulating her. But Dawn tries to be like, no, it's not that. It's just, you know, I appreciate your support, blah, blah, blah. It's just all this, like, this manipul- manipulation. Um, and then Carol wakes up. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I gotta admit, to me, uh, this this finale didn't really feel like a finale in some regards. Like... To me, there were like moments like at the church that was all the Walker action, right? Mm-hmm. That we're used to getting, but like that was the only Walker action basically. I, um, and then we had all these ho- the hospital stuff was kind of weird. I mean, we got a fight between the cops, um, but like the Beth and Dawn, there was like a lot of like one on one scenes. It was definitely a bit slow in that regard. I would agree. I I think that ultimately the ending of this episode, the ending of the episode was the finale. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily this episode being, yeah. you know, like a full-on action-packed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just was leading to this, like you said, inevitable. Yeah, the uh, last death. five, the last five minutes were a finale. Yeah, for sure. But the rest of the episode was more like a setup for the finale, mm-hmm. which I think we also had a complaint about the last episode being slow. Yep. But I guess it all kind of makes sense now. Yeah, they, they were, were just, just building to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, basically Rick and the officers, they're like, or no, he, he's going to trade in the two officers that he has for Beth and Carol. So then they they all go to the hospital. 
Um, Beth has a pair of scissors in her cast. That was like a foreshadowing for what's about to happen. Um, basically, the trade goes fine, but then right before Rick and them leave with Beth, Don demands that they hand Noah over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Noah's like about to do it because he doesn't want any anything else to happen. He's just kind of tired of it. Um, he wants Beth to be able to go home. Um, and then Beth says, like, kind of goes up to Dawn, and she says, I get it now, which is, like, a reference from when, or it's from earlier in the episode where Dawn says, like, don't you get it? Like, like trying to, like, manipulate her. Mm-hmm. And then Beth finally real. I mean, she's known she's full of crap, but, like, this is the moment where, because for someone to have to be that extreme to have to hand Noah back over, mm-hmm. like Beth was just tired of it. Right. So basically she stabs Dawn with mm-hmm. the scissors, um, and then Dawn shoots her. Right, right. Um, and and then, it's shocking because you didn't see it coming. Well, I mean, I think the scissors, they were suppo- it was supposed to be like, oh, yeah, something's going to happen. Yeah. But I don't think we expected her to really use the scissors. I mean, mm-hmm. because to me, the whole exchange, it did feel like something was going to happen. I just didn't know what. I didn't know if we were going to get an all-out fight. And mm-hmm. we kind of did because then Daryl shoots Dawn immediately. Mm-hmm. But then it, it Rick's like, we can all like work together, mm-hmm. which I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, basically, the officers, like, it's over. Like, once Beth and Dawn both die, yeah. um, Noah goes back with um, Rick and them. And then Maggie and them, they all show up at the church. Um, and then he's, uh, Daryl carries out her body. And then Maggie breaks down and cries. Um, that's kind of how it ends. Um, but the very last scene is with Morgan showing up in a post credit scene. And we see that he's following the group. So we know that he's catching up. Yep. So do you think Morgan's going to show up in this season? Like later on? Yeah, I think maybe towards the end he'll make an appearance or they'll weave mm-hmm. him in somehow. I yeah. mean, they're building to something and it's really slow. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we should be surprised if it's next season. Yeah, you know. I think he'll sh- maybe it might not be to like the last minute of the finale though. It yeah, like yeah, I could see that. Or something. Yeah. It's definitely uh, they're mm-hmm. stretching it out. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, that, that now that I think about that, this was an intense episode for mm-hmm. like the most part, um, and a lot of things happened that I did not expect, and I did not expect Beth to die. Right. So um, I expected some of the officers to go down and we would get a big fight. But I wasn't, I don't know if I was like really expecting a death, but mm-hmm. I also wasn't ex- really expecting either death that happened in these three yeah. episodes. But like, what were your themes? Well, um, the name of the episode was Coda, and Coda is the ending of a piece of music, like, mm-hmm. you know, ending of a song or ending of a, a musical. A Coda is the ending. And I think to a certain degree, this was the ending of a story, but it really was the ending of, Be- you know, Beth's death, of course, but it was. Uh, there was a, a change. Like, mm-hmm. there's a new song that's happening after yeah. this. So, they're moving into a new season, turning the page, It's and it ends on a sad note. Mm-hmm. So, I think it, uh, that's... I think some key things that I, 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 I picked out was uh, Rick's brutality in uh, killing Officer uh, Lamson. Mm-hmm. And that, again, he's all over the place because, it, you know, he's a, he, he it wants to negotiate later but his roller coaster uh, comes out and he's a really brutal, brutal deaths, and there's been many of them. Mm-hmm. I found it really interesting that Beth was willing to sacrifice herself in a certain way for Noah. Yeah. And Noah, that relationship they had was something that Beth valued. And I think that's a really good trait. Mm-hmm. Like, she wasn't going to let Noah go back to the, the torture mm-hmm. yeah. of being with Dawn. Um, of course, Beth's death is really heavy uh, for everybody. Um, and I think I'm still in shock on that one. Um, you know, and then there's the mourning and lament that uh, Maggie goes through upon uh, the death. And you even see Daryl, you know, there, there's a lot there. So from a spiritual theme standpoint, I think there's, you know, justice and revenge. There's sacrifice and loss. And then the cost of mercy and that negotiation um, when trying to make the trade mm-hmm. ended up not going very well. Right, so right. it's a lot there, but this is definitely the ending of something. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see what the beginning of the next thing is. Yeah, I remember being super upset when I watched and Beth died. It was just mm-hmm. such a bummer. And I and I feel like even after these episodes, I still feel like they should have given Beth a better send-off. Mm-hmm. And st- to me, it just 
felt because like I feel like every death basically we've gotten has had kind of a like a good send off and like a good close to the character. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I guess in a way Beth kind of did next episode because she appears in like a hallucination. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still would have wanted more. I mean, she was a pretty significant character. Yeah. So I mean, Tyrese got his own episode. Yeah. So I think Beth should have gotten her own too. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree but I also you. get. I think they wanted like a shock, like shocker, mm-hmm. shocker death, um, and it definitely did it. Mm-hmm. I think that was the that was the goal. Yeah, it did it. Now everybody's mourning. I mean, the audience is mourning. Yeah, along with the characters, and mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately, that happened. But from a writing standpoint, uh, it is a significant catalyst to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll see what what happens in the character arcs because yeah. of Beth's death. But one other thing I want to mention about this is Tyrese and Sasha have a moment where Tyrese says that he's still the same after everything that's happened. And Sasha says, that's great that you are, but I can't be. Hmm. Which I think is a very interesting setup for what happens next. Especially mm-hmm. the next two episodes, which are kind of big for both of their characters. Right, right. Um, but I would give this... I mean, this was a pretty good episode. I would give it like a nine. I give it an eight and a half. Yeah. Eight and a half. I think there were some elements of the of the hospital thing that just didn't work for me. It wasn't the most interesting plot yeah. line. Yeah, Dawn yeah. didn't really captivate me as a character. And so mm. I never really was overly interested in, in the dynamics yeah. there. But she, that's just me. She wasn't a very good villain, honestly. Right. But I thought the whole church storyline with the walkers was good. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I thought even... Um, the Rick and Lamson moment was pretty intense at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So there was like good stuff yeah, for in this sure. episode. Yeah. Um, so the next episode is episode nine. It's called What Happened and What's Going On? Um, basically, this episode picks off exactly where it left off, except we really only see half the characters in this episode, right? Like mm-hmm. the other half are just off doing something else. Right. One thing right off the back that was interesting is that Glenn just goes with Rick and Michonne and Maggie's left with the other people and that seems strange like shouldn't he be there supporting unless like she pushed him away and said she needed space but even still i feel like he should have stayed with her right yeah so i thought i thought that was kind of odd so basically they're gonna uh reunite noah with his family um and that's in in washington dc area correct mm -hmm. yeah so so tyrese um tells noah that his father told him and Sasha that as citizens of the world, they should listen to the news and never uh, change the channel or turn it off if it's horrific. Um, pretty much saying they need to be aware of what's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, which there's this whole radio theme throughout the episode yeah. too, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was interesting. Um, but basically, they so Noah lives in Virginia in like this like community neighborhood type thing that's walled, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's his own separate thing. Um, so Tyrese and like once they get in they find out that there's nothing left of Noah's thing like mm-hmm. everything's gone so he's upset so Tyrese stays with him and then Rick Michonne and Glenn go off for supplies um and then we have this thing with Tyrese and Noah Tyrese says he was ready to die when Karen was killed but he kept on fighting and then he lived and as a result he was able to be there for Judith when she needed him um, and then Noah heads to his own house, and they find Noah's family dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, and then Tyrese is distracted, and a walker comes up and bites him, mm-hmm. um, which was just sad. And um, that's and that's um, was Noah's brother that was it bit his, him. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I figured. Yeah. Um, and then Noah goes off and gets Rick and the others. Mm-hmm. And then we have these hallucinations. We have. Um, with Tyrese, we have Martin, who was the guy that he did not kill from episode one, the one right. that was smothering mm-hmm. Judith. We have um, Bob. Mm-hmm. We have the governor. The governor mm-hmm. was not ex- not expecting Shocking. one. I yeah. bet watching that back in the day, people would uh, like be completely shocked that mm-hmm. the governor would be a would be one because this is the first time we've seen them since. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then Lizzie and Mika, mm-hmm. which so I think all those make sense and they're important to his story. I mean, Bob was the only one that was kind of. Like, eh, like, uh, not super important, except the fact that Tyrese stabbed him. But Beth also showed up at one point. Yep. Um, her and Tyrese didn't have much of a connection, but they do have similar traits, like the Herschel. Mm-hmm. Type Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. Um, basically, on the radio, Tyrese hears the story about this group of people. They go up the East Coast and they slaughter innocent people. Um, and this, of course, messes with him, and he's kind of regretting his decisions. 
throughout all of this, but Bob and the girls try to say, like, you did the right thing, and death is much better than being alive. Mm -hmm. Um, But the governor and Martin are kind of being, like, antagonizing him for you couldn't do what needed to be done. And the governor says you had to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Tyrese gets bit by another walker. Like, uh, that was Double. completely unexpected. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's just even sadder. Same arm, though, it's right? Same arm, yeah. yeah. It's just his arm, like, gone, pretty much. Like, mm. there's almost nothing left to it. Um, yeah, what did you think of these hallucinations? Well, I, I think there was an internal struggle that he was dealing with. Um, a lot of it, you know, he he had some guilt, um, you know, struggling with forgiveness, and he really wanted peace. And I think... All of that was coming out in those hallucinations. He was wrestling with so much, trying to come to grips with death. Mm-hmm. You know, being at peace so he could die, rest in peace. You know, he wanted to get there. And I think that's what the hallucinations are. I'm curious if there was, and I didn't pay that close attention, but if there was some things in the visions that are, you know, kind of mm-hmm. looking forward to future yeah. events. Uh, so, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then elsewhere with Rick, Michonne, and Glenn, Michonne says she wants to settle in one place, and mm-hmm. she thinks they could do it here, and the the where they're at. Rick says that he doesn't think that's uh, a, that can happen. Um, Michonne says they should go to Washington D.C. because even though Eugene lied, there could still be a, um, resources available to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, so they kind of agree to go there, and then Noah shows up, and then they go back to um, Tyrese. Um, the Tyrese and then Tyrese has more hallucinations Um, Beth shows up um, she sings and then the governor continues to antagonize him Um, and now I didn't write down exactly what Tyrese said to the governor um, but I thought it was a very powerful speech um, just showing like the difference between them and how Tyrese always chose good Mm-hmm. Well, the governor chose bad. Right. Um, which, again, I mean, Herschel and the governor were po- po- um, polar opposites of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so this, in a way, was kind of that standoff between good versus evil. Um, just not in the Rick versus the governor way that we never really got. Mm-hmm. In a way, we got it with Tyrese and the governor, mm-hmm. which was an interesting choice. But Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, those are great, great points, Micah. I really, I, those are definitely um, mm-hmm. um, thought-provoking. Yeah. But I love Tyrese in this moment where he confronts him. Mm -hmm. Um, And, I mean, basically, this was Tyrese's episode, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it was just so sad because we knew what was going to happen. But in a way, I think it was better than Beth's because you expected it to happen once he got bit. And Mm -hmm. then we kind of got a whole episode to, to, I guess, appreciate what was happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, we knew what was coming, so it wasn't like a complete shocker. Right. So, which I think was needed. It wouldn't have been, like, good if it was another shocker at the last five minutes like the last one was right um as hard as it was it was it was kind of like like, a all a half of an episode or mm -hmm. three-fourths of an episode dealing with what was again inevitable at least Mm -hmm. it appeared all the visions and everything were leading to his death Mm -hmm. um yeah and it, it was definitely different than the last episode yeah um, and then Michonne amputates his arm. That was just brutal. Just mm-hmm. yep. with, with her sword. Mm-hmm. Just cutting it off. Um, and then they must escape with Tyrese. Um, they have to fight through these walkers. They get in the car. Tyrese has more visions. It's just Bob, Beth, and the girls, though, because the governor and Martin are gone at this mm-hmm. point. He's only has the, like, these happy people. Yeah, well, um, and that's the progression towards yeah. peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he tells Bob to turn off the radio and decides he's ready to join them mm-hmm. in the afterlife. And then he dies. Um, he's put down um, by Michonne. Um, and then the everyone attends his funeral. And it's kind of... The, the the episode began with a funeral, but we all thought it was Beth. Mm-hmm. It turns out it was... It was. Uh, it was, was Tyrese. Tyrese. But I, I don't... Did Beth get a funeral then? We didn't, I we assume so, but I mean, I... I yeah, I, I mean, I it would have been so. nice to see Beth's funeral. Yeah. Though, because well, and I, maybe this is going to come back around somehow. Maybe they're going to yeah. bring out something of Beth in the future and have to yeah. you know, I mean, officially mourn. I feel like they have to. I mean, I think it'll be essential to Maggie and Daryl, mm-hmm. um, but I think there'll be something bigger, I hope so, Yeah, like there is with Tyrese. Mm-hmm. And then we have the very ending where Sasha's crying and then Rick buries Tyrese, and then we see his um, beanie on the, mm-hmm. the cross. That was a really nice, touching moment. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, 
so yeah that 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 was quite an episode and that was really sad but i i felt like and it, i felt different after finishing that than i did the other one mm-hmm. because it felt like it was very well done his death yeah. and had a lot of meaning to it and the beth one just didn't really have that right it was just totally because those yeah completely yeah, different a shocker and almost like they're they're very opposites in the way that they, the show wrote mm-hmm. those two yeah um even though they were both very similar in their in their goodness yeah. as mm-hmm. characters yeah so what were your themes well i think the the title is interesting what happened and what's going on and and i think this one just captures the character's disorientation and grief like what happened what's going on these are questions almost in the sense of they're confused uh and in you know i mean really when you think about the two deaths back to back super confused uh but after beth's uh death the decision to go and honor beth to go to noah's house i think that's a significant uh move in in the story that they're willing what's that it was like a subtle thing yeah it was a subtle thing but it was significant that they would be able to move i mean Mm -hmm. they've kind of stayed in the same area i mean they've moved some you know around Mm -hmm. but there was something significant about this one Mm -hmm. in honoring a beth and Mm -hmm. again i think the all of that we already talked about with tyrese and and forgiveness uh peace um you know his acceptance of life and death um and then the group itself, the resilience of the group, going through two deaths in a short amount of time, mm-hmm. that's causing massive, massive grief, but it's also, again, forcing them to harden up and become resilient. And it'll be interesting to see, I mean, you look at Sasha, it'll be very interesting to see how they handle all this grief mm-hmm. moving forward. Yep. I, I thought it was a really good episode. Again, I would say eight and a half, the same as last one. What do you got? I would say nine and a half. Okay, so you like really strong, like this one. Strong, yeah. yeah. I mean, I like Tyrese a lot, so it's that's not surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he had a great send-off. I still wish he did more, but I think for as little as he got of plot, he did a really good job. I agree. The actor was great. Yeah. Uh, the character development was great. And again, he um, was the moral compass. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. again, we're seeing this... This goodness seems to be very minimal mm-hmm. in this world. Yeah. Um, you get these little lights uh, and you're thinking, wow, you know, they're going to be the next Herschel or whatever. They're going to be the moral uh, compass for the, the group. Uh, but that light goes out. Mm-hmm. So and, I mean, and he did have more to do this season, I thought, than he did in previous seasons. Right. So, I mean, I do, I do like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about episode 10. It's called Them. Yep. Um, basically, this is just the aftermath of both Beth and Tyrese's death. And mostly is focused on Maggie, Sasha, and Daryl. And they're dealing with the loss. Um, they're they're going to D.C. Um, it's it's nice to see the whole group back together, though. It's the first time we've got it since, like, well, really the prison. But, I mean, because they picked up Noah, you know. Um, but, like, it's it, it's nice to see everyone back together. Would you agree? Mm, yes. It, even though there's just so much just hurt and pain. Mm-hmm. But with the group too um but gabriel tries to like console maggie mm-hmm. um, but she's not having it at all she's there not upset. at all she's really mad at god yeah and you know she just thinks that he completely is like what he's supposed to evoke is god because mm-hmm. he's a pastor mm-hmm. or um and he didn't do that at all right like because he turned his flock away mm-hmm. um, and they all know that yeah and uh, yeah it, it's it's an it's another instance and and later on there's a moment too that that we'll talk about or I'll go ahead and bring it up now where he like burns his collar thing mm-hmm. um and Maggie sees that so I think that's a setup for something um I think I think maybe the the there'll be a connection between Gabriel and Maggie right maybe is what they're setting up and I think they they can maybe be part of each other's healing journey mm-hmm. I mean to me I feel like. There, Gabriel has to be involved in this somehow because of how broken he is and how broken these members of the group are now. Um, and and I'm very curious to see what that's going to be like. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you know, the burning of the, um, you know, the religious symbol mm-hmm. for him was, was not necessarily a, a getting rid of his faith. It was getting rid of his title, his persona per se yeah and i think by doing that i mean my hope is he'll capture real faith like he'll discover purpose mm-hmm. and meaning beyond the, the job the position that he had and uh that was a positive sign i mean could this kind of be a parallel to like kane like being 
his one sin defines him. Mm-hmm. In, in a way, it's a good Gabriel, too. It could be. It'll be a little parallel. It could be, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. But Maggie also says she doesn't believe in God anymore, isn't mm-hmm. religious. And I think part of that has to do with finding out the Gabriel thing. Like, how can you believe in the church when people who are supposed to lead it do stuff like that? Well, I think uh, Maggie is dealing with multiple deaths, trauma, and all that her stuff. Dad, her and dad. She yeah. never really fully dealt with her dad's death. And, and then now her sister. That, yeah. Yeah, and so I don't think it's a matter of uh, doesn't have faith. I think it, it, it's the... She no longer believes the way that she once did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's this concept that... that um, that we need to talk about uh, more in our faith is called lament. And lament is kind of uh, grieving uh, and being honest with God and just crying out, yelling, and sometimes venting and screaming and just, you know. And I think that she's in this stage of, like, trying to deal with what is real, what isn't, and she's hurt. Mm -hmm. She's lamenting. And my hope is that for both Gabriel and her that something real emerges Mm-hmm. You know, that idea of helping one another, loving one another, yeah. that Herschel ended up really demonstrating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically then Rick and the group, um, they come across another herd of walkers, but he's kind of like, let's just not do it. Like, let's mm-hmm. not kill them. Yeah. Or let's do as little as possible. Sure. And then Sasha steps in and just, like, kills she goes all of them. She goes yeah. very aggressive. She cuts Abraham on the the arm Mm -hmm. um and then she almost stabs michonne Mm -hmm. um now i gotta like michonne and sasha have not really interacted Um, yeah it's like this is their first interaction um michonne warns her not to end up like tyrese because she saw similarities from when tyrese was like that after karen died now Mm -hmm. i don't think that really helped sasha like i'm not sure if that was the right thing to say to sasha at that uh, moment like i don't think that was the like yeah again like i think positive things you know probably Mm -hmm. like i don't think saying like don't end up like your brother and michonne was referencing like the negative trait of tyrese but tyrese was so much more than that too so i mean i understood where she was coming from this is a another element of being defined by your worst actions and yeah Mm -hmm. that's unfortunate and michonne did the thing that you know we we have try not to do is to kind of say something Mm -hmm. when somebody's grieving to try to answer like, it or end up like so and so, but that's right. not what the person, person really needs. needs to hear yeah, they, yeah, they need mm-hmm. presence and, and support. Yeah. And, and Sasha really did not get that. I mean, I think people tried in a way, but I also think people were more focused on Maggie and Daryl. Yeah, which is a bummer. Sasha was kind of pushed to the sidelines. I thought. I think so too. Uh, you know, and grief is a weird thing. Everyone deals with it a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when people are grieving, they distance themselves, not not Sasha distance herself, but people distance themselves for the one who's grieving because they don't know what to do and know what to say. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that was going on some too. They were like, oh, we don't want to deal with her. Right, right. Um, and then Glenn tells Maggie we need to keep like living, like, uh-huh. like we need to fight to live. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we got some Glenn and Maggie that we didn't get last episode. Um, I, I like I like those scenes. And then I like the Glenn and Daryl interaction, too, where he says we can survive, but only together. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. was, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, two that I feel like we barely see any of Glenn and Daryl that I would love to see more of, like, interactions between them. Well, I think, you know, if if you're, you're talking about potential moral compass, I think Glenn has a good shot at it. I think but so. He's grown as a character so much, so it'd be interesting to see if he begins to to mm-hmm. step up as a leader and, and provide some uh, encouragement. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Um, and then this, these group of dogs show up, and then Sasha just shoots the dogs, mm-hmm. and then they eat the dogs. Well, they have, uh, they have dinner. Yeah, so they, they Which, predicted the future. The interesting, yeah, exactly. The interesting thing about that is they, the beginning part of the episode, they were starving and looking mm-hmm. for food anywhere, and it turns out to be dogs what they had to survive on. I, I just find that whole narrative, uh, very interesting. Mm-hmm. And I imagine you know, at the end of that, that was a, uh, a uh, very satisfying meal compared to hunting for bugs and everything else. Yeah. Noah tells Sasha he's not sure if he can make it. Yep. Sasha says, then you won't. Mm-hmm. Which, That's where Sasha's at. Yeah, I mean, and there's some truth to that. Like, if you are that, if you don't believe in yourself like that, then you're not going to make it. 
Like you need to believe in yourself. Yeah, you need to have courage and, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and resilience. What, and yeah, and that's an, that's another interesting uh, element is uh, Sasha of all people replied in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing about Sasha is that I realize just how like young she is and how young she really looked in this particular episode, and just how like small she is like as a person. Hmm. It is very interesting. Um, she's just so young and vulnerable and, and she's had to become like, she's, and it's crazy to see her in this aggressive state. You Mm -hmm. know, she, I think she, she lost, she doesn't have any family left. Right. You know, um, just like a few of these other people too. Um, but we, there's this nice moment where Carol gives Daryl a kiss on the cheek. Um, I I like, I like that moment a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. and then they find that there's these, there's these water bottles that randomly show up on the road. Yeah, yeah. And then Eugene is going to drink it, but Abraham knocks it out of his hand. Um, yeah, Abraham's still the protector. Yeah, he's still a protector. And then rain comes, um, but it turns to a thunderstorm, so they have yeah. to go to a barn. Um, and then they get to the barn. Um, Rick has this, like this great speech basically saying that we are the walking dead, and mm-hmm. we do what we have to do. And he references his grandfather back in World War II. Mm-hmm. Um and Daryl says we're not them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Daryl, Maggie, and Sasha work together to barricade the door because neither three of them are sleeping. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the rest, they're joined the by the group. rest of the group. Mm-hmm. Now I kind of like the, con- the how Daryl, Maggie, and Sasha connected in that moment mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um, you know the ones who are grieving, and I'm glad they had Daryl grieve too because mm-hmm. I think it would have been. Like, if he just, if they just had Maggie and Sasha be the ones because they were family, they would have discredited the whole Daryl and Beth thing. Right. So I'm glad no, they that's had Daryl. That's, that's true. Yeah. Um, and he's a quiet dude, so mm-hmm. the whole grief thing is important for him. Yeah. And then there's also this music box that Carl gives Maggie, mm-hmm. um, and then Daryl fixes it for her. And then Maggie and Sasha go on, they, they get a, a walk. walk yeah. yeah. And then... Sasha says she doesn't know how to carry on, but Maggie says they will. And then the, this man named Aaron comes up. Um, he's from the comics. I, I recognize him. But he says he's a friend, and he knows Rick's name. Mm. Um, and then they, they like, point their guns at him, and then the music box plays. Mm-hmm. And that was how it ended off. So to me, I think Aaron, well, from the comics, and I, I'm sh- like, he's a good guy. And I think he is a good guy and will be. And I think that's the whole point of the music box playing, too, yes. is that they're reaching some sort of peace, um, which I think is what I loved about how this episode ended, was Maggie, Sasha, and Daryl both taking a step towards healing, and then this guy showing up with seemingly good news. Mm-hmm. And I think if it just happened to be another bad guy or trap, it would just be kind of be frustrating. So yeah, because the cycle of it, this is a little yeah, bit different. I, I think... That, I think and just, not just from the comics, but I think even just watching this, I think they've reached a good guy, like or a good guy's come to them. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of the episode. Um, what were your themes? Well, the name of the episode was "Them," and there was this interesting. Uh, you mentioned it, uh, where Rick says, "We are the Walking Dead," and uh, Daryl says, "We're not them." And so, really, it's this conflict of: uh, is there a difference? between these humans who are trying to survive and the monsters, the, the, the zombies. Mm-hmm. And in Rick's mind, they're, they're all the same. And in which really, if you look at the hints of Rick's dehumanization, the way he's been incredibly violent, he's turned into something that he doesn't like, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Daryl says, no, we don't want to be them. And I think, you know, the story throughout this whole series has been, you know, can this group remain human or mm-hmm. will they become the very monsters they're fighting against? Uh, and then that's a literal thing as well as a, as a metaphorical thing. Because, uh, of course, when they die, they become one. So, uh, and I think that's a big, big part of this. I really love the progression of hope in this episode I, th- I thought it was significant with the water bottle with the rain and then everyone just was like an awe of the rain again they're mm-hmm. thirsty and they're hungry and all this and they just kind of open their mouths and drink in the water and it was like 
wow, finally some hope. Uh, and then the storm came, and again, it was like depressing. It was like, oh no, this is not real. But then, um, you know, they find a barn, there's some shelter, then the zombies come, and then there's this miracle in the storm mm-hmm. that the storm killed all the zombies outside in a weird freaking way. I mean, they're all just like dead, trees fall on them and all this stuff, but the barn's still standing. Yeah. It was a very strange, the episode had a very much a, a miracle kind of theme. Yeah, like these like, are weird things happening. They were, were religious things kind of thrown in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like a so- sovereign or, or providential things happen in certain ways to save certain people, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the music box and that. It's just like this progression. We talked two episodes uh, ago about Coda and the ending. Mm-hmm. This felt like a beginning. This felt like something new, like the yeah. the rain, the storm washed away, and mm-hmm. people have grieved, and there's now this new fresh start. So I'm really curious to see where this all goes. Um, Me too. But um, yeah, yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a great episode. I like this episode better than the other two episodes. Mm-hmm. So I give this nine, nine and a half. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I liked it as much as last episode because I think the last episode was so well done. Mm-hmm. But I would still give it a nine. I thought it was very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, but two, like, I thought they also set up two potential pairings. Not romantic pairings. Well, one of them could be, I guess. I mean, with we have Maggie and Gabriel. Um, I think they're kind of setting up Yeah, something there's something there. that could be there. Yeah, a really good spiritual. And Sasha and Abraham have a scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and two people who are not... Who, like who are because Abraham's drinking throughout this episode. He's very much unstable mm-hmm. throughout. But I and Abraham's like you need friends basically, mm-hmm. which is an unlikely, genuine thing for him to say. Mm-hmm. Sasha says we are not friends. Now mm-hmm. I feel like they'll eventually become friends. Is like foreshadowing that. Now I don't know if that'll be a relationship or not. I mean he's still with mm-hmm. Rosita, um, but we'll see. Um, but anything else you want to say? Um, no, I mean, not not necessarily in this episode. I mean, I, again, I, I'm very curious to see where this all goes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, that's episodes 8, 9, and 10. Um, the, the, the few, like, lingering questions real quick, if you want to go. Yeah, how will this. Beth and Tyrese's death impact the group long term? Um, I mean, I think it'll continue. I mean, I think we'll get something bigger with Beth in particular. Um but I mean, I feel like the 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 especially Maggie and Sasha, their their grief journeys are not over. Um, they're going to continue. Yeah, and I think the you know the uh, deeper into that is you know here you have these two characters that are compassionate and they were morally grounded, and again, they died. Yeah. So what will happen with that element in the group? And you know, it's just interesting. I think. Uh, uh, and then we talked about uh, Daryl, Sasha, and Maggie and how they're dealing with their grief. It'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see how yeah. that all goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll be back next time to talk about um, more episodes of Season 5 and looking forward to seeing what's next. Um, so thanks for joining me, and thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye, everyone. See ya.